students got to see the fall play on Wednesday. Um, during their last period, we got to see a sneak peek of the fall play. And then um, the, they performed over the weekend. Um, on November 10th, the teachers had an in-service day, and they attended work sites pertaining to, um, pertaining to their respective subjects. Um, they built community partners for student job shadows, and they discussed the skills they needed to be successful in, this, in their respective careers. And finally, um, the senior high students will be collecting donations to make baskets to donate to um, families in the district to have a Thanksgiving dinner. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, the enrollment report is attached. Do you have any comment on that, Mr. Chairman? Okay. 4,000 strong. 4,000 strong. Right. Okay, um, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Tepper. She's going to give us a personal comment on that. software called Inkscape. And the reason for the Inkscape software 
The reason that was chosen by the Carnegie Science Center is that it is free. So our students can actually access that software at any time on any device, and they're able to design something and put it on a jump drive, and then they would be able then to either take it to Carnegie Science Center or bring it into any um, fab lab. And if we would have the um, fab lab materials, the laser cutters, they would be able to continue their project. But one of the big things that the gentleman spoke to me about today from the Science Center was they wanted to make certain that this could be utilized by all students. So if, if they grasped, if a student was very interested and they thought this is definitely something that they wanted to pursue, they would have the opportunity to do that at no cost. The students designed a glider and a decal to be placed on the glider and basically that was to brand their personal glider. They utilize laser cutters to produce the gliders and the decals, and then they had the opportunity to experiment with those gliders to see what worked, what didn't work, how they may have to go back to the software program to redesign and then um, to rethink the entire project. As I stated, the first presentation with the individuals from the Carnegie Science Center, they talked about the impact of physics on flight. So there was an instructional component prior to the instruction on the software and how to utilize the software. So the information pertaining to the physics obviously was applicable to what they were uh, completing and creating today. Then there was obviously um, training on the Inkscape software. And since our teachers did participate in that professional development, our teachers were a part of this and they were able to rotate around and assist the students as well. There were also there were three representatives from Carnegie Science Center and also a representative from Kenna Metal. These are some of our, this is our, one of our students today just using the laser cutter. And what you're um, viewing in the photo is the actual glider being cut from the design that the student had created through the software. It's really neat. I know we've seen um, 3D printers, and it does take some time for the 3D printer to actually produce something. Uh, the laser cutter is very fast. So if you have a class of 15, those students can work through and be able to complete their project at a much greater speed than if it is a 3D printer. <coughs> The, uh, the laser cutter that you see in that photo is a 40 watt laser cutter. That's a $15,000 piece of equipment. Um, the exhaust system that connects next to it is about another $10,000. So if we continue, and we hope we will be continuing to create our STEM learning centers and our STEM labs, if we would be able to purchase a laser cutter and it would remain stationary, we would not need the piece of exhaust system um, where the lady is standing behind if it remains stationary. The reason for that exhaust system is if it's moved and it um, has to actually be bedded into that exhaust system, whereas if it's somewhere that's permanent and it can exhaust elsewhere, um, we would not have to purchase that. But obviously, if you're rotating the laser cutter um, you know, amongst the buildings, then you would have to purchase this as well. Here are the students actually constructing their bladder. And um, this, was, this was really neat to see. There was a lot of discussion with this, what worked, what maybe fit, what didn't fit, and how you saw a little bit of frustration along with this too, but actually excitement with the students, knowing that they had to go back to the drawing board and, and say, okay, um, why didn't this work? What do I need to do this time? And we would just like to thank Kenamo for this opportunity. Um, again, just another great opportunity for our students to experience activities in STEM-related fields and also be able to design and, and to see a product within a three-hour period and then to utilize those critical thinking and problem-solving skills to go back to the drawing board to improve that product. So just a quick presentation. Um, again, they'll be here on Tuesday, and, or excuse me, Wednesday and Thursday of this week. And feel free to come out to the junior high. We'd love to see anybody here. So are there any questions? Okay, thank you very much.
GLSC confidential. Second. Can move and second. Any questions? Resolution number 93 to approve Community Foundation of West Warren County Youth Philanthropy Program Service. I'll just add that this is a survey, rather innocuous survey of students at the high school, 20 random sample students, and they're asking the students what, based on their career um, ideas, what kind of philanthropy they might be interested in, what they would think they would get out of a philanthropic activity. It's, not a big deal. Yes. Move and second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Um, I would like to um, bundle resolution number um, 94 and 95. 94 being to approve the Center for Hearing and Deaf Services Incorporated contract and 95 to approve Dr. Ray M. Milkey as an Associate General Service Agreement. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions? All those in favor for adoption 94 and 95, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And then attach an end. And um, the next curriculum committee meeting was, well, we have a meeting tonight um, at 6 p.m. here in the CSC. The next meeting will be Tuesday, February the 21st, 2017, here in the CSC also. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mann. My name is Mrs. Billings. Thank you. I'd like to move for adoption of resolution number 96, the treasurer's report, and resolution number 97, the payment of bills. Second. We move and second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And then so passed And I'd like to move for adoption of resolution number 98 to approve gifts, grants, and donations. Resolved that the Maryland Pro Board of School Directors hereby accepts $3,000 donated by the LES PTO for an elementary cultural assembly at LES. Second. Moved and seconded. We're very thankful for that. I'll say All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? And that passes unanimously. And I'd like to turn the rest of my portion over to Mr. Watson, who's going to explain to us the Homestead Farmstead exclusion and the uh, debt resolution. Thank you, Mrs. Elder. We, we adopt this Homestead Farmstead um, exclusion application mailing annually, uh, but just to review it very quickly, um, <clears throat> under Act 1, uh, school districts are re required to notify residents of their eligibility for Homestead Farmstead exclusions. Uh, this exclusion is the mean by means by which a property tax relief is given. Uh, it is an exclusion because it excludes a portion excuse me, of the assessed value of the property from taxation. Um, it's required that we do this mailing by December 31st. Uh, the county, once again, has agreed to handle this mailing <coughs> at the cost of uh, 64 cents per mailing. Um, the total cost is about $2,272. Uh, they'll be ma mailing out 3,550 applications. So it's a, it's a resolution we adopt annual, annually. Are there any questions on that? Moved and seconded. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes The next item we have is to approve a uh, debt resolution. I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Tom Lynch from Lynch and Lynch. Uh, he's our bond counsel. Um, also in attendance uh, is uh, Ms. 
uh, Alicia Reese uh, from Janie Montgomery Scott as our underwriter, and uh, Mr. Wes Hall from uh, PFM as our financial advisor. So I'll turn it over to Stephen. Uh, thanks. thanks very much, Ben. Uh, we have the uh, debt resolution in front of the board, and uh, normally we've been out here for refundings. In this case, we're doing a funding of the first leg of the new elementary school project. And so in order to do, provide flexibility and get the bonds issued and closed by the end of the year, we're using a parameters method whereby the district is going to approve uh, the bonds up to and not to exceed $12 million, when in fact the bond issue itself, we're going to issue bonds just south of 10 to take advantage of the bank qualified uh, issuance. So the debt resolution uh, of the school board really authorizes incurring the debt, which is actually the bonds, through entering into the 16th supplemental lease agreement. And under that lease agreement, you would assign your lease rental payments to the authority's trustee who then pays the bonds. So it's as simple as that. And really, if I can just read the summary, it's a resolution of the <coughs> district authorizing lease rental debt for purposes of funding purposes. You're going to authorize execution of the 16th supplement agreement of lease between the authority and the district as the lessee and the guarantor. You're going to consent to the assignment of the lease rental payments under the lease agreement. And you're going to authorize all the filing of these debt documents with DCD for approval. So that, in a summary, is the debt resolution. And I'd like to take up any questions that you might have on it. And following your discussions, uh, Wes Hall just has a very short handout that he's going to go over what interest rates might look like when we actually do the sale, which will be in about two weeks as of November 20th. Um, after this meeting, we're going to go out with the authority who's going to then adopt what's called a bond resolution, and they will authorize selling the bonds to Jamie Montgomery Scott, and uh, that's, that's it. So that's my summary. Any questions? I'll turn it over to Wes. All right, hello everyone. My name is Wes Hall. I work with uh, Scott Public Financial Management. So what I'll be walking through tonight is the, the gold handout, so if you go ahead and take that out. We'll just be uh, I'll walk you through things real quickly here. So as you all know, Scott's attended a number of meetings over the past month or so related to the elementary school project. And tonight is just a continuation of the, of the uh, process and of the next step on the uh, finance and timeline. So if you could go ahead and turn to page one, please. This is just a reflection of the current municipal market. Uh, what you can see by looking at the top chart, you can see the gray boxes reflect the range of yields for each year in the yield curve over the past 10 years. And you can see that red line at the top is the 10-year historic average, and that blue line is where rates are currently at. So to just give everyone a little bit of color into the market, uh, since the election, we have seen a little bit of volatility. Um, you know, uh, with Trump being elected, it wasn't exactly expected. So the, there was a little bit of uh, uh, volatility, as I mentioned, with everybody getting used to uh, his, his policies and whatnot moving forward or what's expected to be his policies. And we have seen a general uh, slight uptick in rates here over the past week or so. Um, things have started to settle down a little bit. So while we have seen that uh, slight uptick, when we go, when we first initially uh, s structure the numbers and, and run the numbers, we were a bit conservative. So there still is, um, you know, the numbers in here are probably right around the current market rate for the first step. And so with that said, even with the uptick in rates, we are still well below the 10-year historic average. So while we might not be at those all-time historic lows anymore, uh, it's still a good time to, to go out into the market. So flipping to the next page, page two. This just gives a general overview of uh, what we are here for tonight. So the district is looking into a $31.2 million elementary school project, and we're going to be uh, looking to structure the new bond as a wraparound structure just to, to minimize the millage impact. And going along with that to minimize the millage impact, we're going to utilize uh, some capitalized interest and uh, some cash for the uh, second and third borrowings. And as you'll see later on tonight in the, on the summary page, 
that number isn't set and we, we plan to, to basically look over the market and, and see what that final amount will need to be when we get closer to those uh, next two borrowings. And then if you go and look toward the bottom of the, of the uh, second page there, this just goes into a little bit more detail uh, regarding the parameters resolution. It basically summarizes what uh, Tom just said. So page three, this is a uh, timeline of the elementary school project. As I mentioned, Scott was here for the uh, financing, finance committee meeting and Act 34 here a month or so ago. And then tonight is uh, for the adoption of the parameters resolution. And then next steps from here moving forward, uh, we're planning on pricing the first series of bonds, the first step or the week of November 28th. We're initially targeting around the, the November 30th deadline because that gives us then enough time to settle by the end of the year. And then step two and step three, we're just going to be anticipating over you know the next year, year and a half, um, basically spring, summer 2017 and early 2018. Page four shows just a snapshot of the district's debt portfolio. Looking at the top half, this shows the current debt service requirements, and the bottom half shows the local effort local effort requirements once you net out the, uh, the state share. So flipping over to page five, this is a, sub, a financing summary for the elementary school project. So what you can see is if you look in column one, the blue column furthest to the left, this is the first step that we're planning on pricing, uh, pricing in a couple weeks here. It's gonna be just under $10 million to, to maintain those bank qualified interest rates. And what that gets you as a refresher is just a lower lower interest rate than the five-year call feature. Uh, for steps two and steps three, as I mentioned, we're going to be looking into utilizing some capitalized interest and uh, potentially some cash as well, just to make sure we minimize that initial millage impact, just so that we can have the uh, final goal being a project with no impact on the, the district's millage. So after this page, uh, Page five, page six goes into a little bit more detail related to the series of 2016 new money borrowing. Um, and then after that, it's just the, the estimated sources of uses and the actual maximum parameters debt service schedule. So I would, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board may have right now. Are there any questions for Wes? Um, if, if not, um, I failed to introduce uh, our school 40 is in attendance. Uh, they're sitting in the, the, the uh, three handsome gentlemen in the back row. Uh, we'll be moving over to the next uh, room so that they can do their business. But I want to thank uh, Dr. Jean Leonard for coming, uh, Keith Viscani, and Carl Walmice. We appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Yeah, before, before we leave the, the subject of the authority, um, our, our president of the authority, Mr. Fisher, have been very ill, and um, he was not able to attend tonight. I'm feeling better, um, and I just would like that we all um, think of him in our thoughts and prayers. He's a wonderful man. He's been the president of the authority as long as I can remember. I've been doing this now for 33 years, so it's a wonderful job. Are there any questions on bond resolutions?
a new policy regarding procurement cards. regarding travel insurance policy, which uh, uh, is, is available to all school board members uh, when they attend any kind of school board function of uh, their uh, range of travel within their district. And for a premium, it's also available for other travel that they may have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Watson. I'm very fortunate to we are having a technology meeting on Tuesday, the 20th, here at CSC at 6 p.m. Thank you. 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 I'd ask the board to move on resolution number 105, which is the approval of the resignations as listed. Second. 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 And then the second is the <clears throat> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes unanimously. Then I'd ask the board to move on resolution number 106, which is the approval of the professional personnel substitute teachers uh, that are listed. Second. And then the second. Any comments? Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Then I'd ask the board to move on resolution number 107, which is the approval of the support personnel. One substitute custodian, Alfred Perel. So second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And I'd ask the board to move on resolution number 108, which is the approval of a non contractual professional employee retirement incentive. And I would note um, that this is the uh, same retirement incentive that had been offered during the 2015-16 school year by the school board. Um, if you note the bold lettering, um, this is uh, wholly contingent upon the district receiving at least 10 letters of resignation for retirement purposes from eligible professional employees at the Greater Latrobe School District Administration Office no later and the close of business on March 31st, 2017. In the event that less than 10 individuals submit letters of resignation for retirement purposes, this non-contractual professional employee retirement incentive offering will be withdrawn. Uh, the remainder of the um, retirement incentive is the language that was in the retirement incentive last year. I just wanted to note uh, the number of 10 and the date uh, that we need uh, to have those letters turned in. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any questions? I think it should be said that the, the finance committee had uh, considered this at length and are willing to do this again and recommend it to the uh, board members. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. And I would note uh, the items of other business. The students uh, reference several of the events that are coming up, notably the formal extravaganza tomorrow evening, the Breakfast of Champions for the second uh, month this year, November is Thursday. Um, there's a Breakfast with Santa um, that is sponsored um, here at the Center for Student Creativity on Saturday morning, December 3rd, if you'd like to bring a young child. The holiday concerts are listed there. Um, as well as the elementary and junior high school. Um, and the board meetings are reorganization meetings for December. Uh, will be held at 7 p.m. Um, Tuesday, December 6th um, here, as well as um, our regular board meeting will be Tuesday, December 20th. Um, as Mrs. Altaf has noted, uh, the school board photograph will be taken on the, the night of the reorganization meeting, um, so we will be scheduling that. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Hearing of 
Visitors Part 2, where anybody can speak to anything on the wall is in this part. And resolution, I have moved it out of resolution 109, for the favor of second. Moved and second, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? 